Romans 5. Not only so, but we glory in tribulations, which means that's pressure and affliction, trouble, and adversity. Glory and trouble. You got to be out of your ever loving mind. No, because it says also knowing that, knowing that, knowing, knowing. How can you glory? Knowing. Knowing that tribulation works, it works patience. And patience is going to work experience. And experience is going to work hope. And if you don't have hope, you have nothing for your faith to feel. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. Amen. Father, thank you for the reading of your word. We glorify you and we magnify you. And thank you that our AC unit got fixed this week. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let me start out by saying when I find myself between a rock and a hard place and finally realize that my futile, <laughs> finite thinking can't do diddly squat. You ever been into the diddly squat? I've been to the diddly squat a lot of times. I don't care how much that I pondered it. I let it rent. Listen, because that's what you'll eventually do. You'll let it rent space in your mind. You're still trying to figure it out. You're not. I will submit and humble myself unto God. And I'll usually say things like, I'm going to learn from this. You don't know how many times I've like, you know what? I think I made a mistake. I got to own it. First thing you got to do is you got to own it. Or at least be, at least humble yourself enough to say, I don't have a clue. And say, I'm going to learn something from this. That's, that, that, that's what I know God's working with me. Because I'm sitting there and I'm just kind of like, Whoosh. yeah. And then all of a sudden, just faith rises up. And I said, you know what? I'm going to learn for something like this. I had even one of my spiritual sons one time. There was some, uh, <laughs> we were ministering in a place and there was all kinds of stuff breaking loose. And I just ha hadn't I just come up and have a word that just kind of dissolved everything. Wisdom just went forth. And afterwards he was like, wow, Dad, that was awesome. I said, yeah, it was. <laughs> And he was amazed that I could speak a word into a situation that would diffuse it, that wisdom would come in and be, everybody would be like, oh. You know why he got to see that? Because for the first 10 or 15 times, it didn't come out that way. <laughs> so it's kind of like a checklist. All right. Blah, 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 blah. And then it's like, okay, don't do that. The next time, try to stay away from doing that. The third time, don't quite say it that way. Yeah. Yeah. So by process of elimination, eventually there comes a day where you're like, let's say the Lord. And it's like, okay, that was right. <laughs> Do it that way. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to learn something from this. I'm going to be stronger. I'm going to be wiser. And with more experience. And have a greater, listen, confidence in you, Lord. When this is over, I'm going to know you in a different way. Or I'm going to know you in, this, in a way that I've known you at another level. I am, de listen, I'm determined that I know you are for me and you will forgive me and we're going to get something out of this. And eventually I'll maybe be able to pass something on to somebody else and we'll talk about that next week. Amen? About passing on. You can learn, listen, you can learn from 10-minute phone calls every other month from a mentor or you can learn by having to uh, get yourself out of that hole for the next 10 years. 
You can learn one way or the other. One will cost you a lot. The other one's cheap. You're getting it on a clearance. It costs them something. Amen. But it won't cost you something. Amen. Just maybe a little bit of your time. How about that? But even start thanking God for his deliverance. Because tribulation or adversity will give us the opportunity. Listen. Adversity will give us the opportunity. Let me say it again. Adversity will give us the opportunity to use. Think about it. You don't know him and Jehovah Jireh as your provider unless you need something. You'll never know him as Jehovah Rapha, your healer, unless you battle in something. You'll never know him, uh, Jehovah Shama, as your, your, your shepherd unless you need somebody to come alongside of you in a season. Come on, somebody help me. You can say it, the name, but you don't know the name. You can quote that scripture, but you haven't lived it yet. So it's just all theory, and it's truth, and it's right, but you haven't experienced it yet. It's not empirical knowledge. It's just, you've just pulled it over your head. But when you know him as that, when you've went through the fire and you don't smell like smoke, somebody give a Lord an amen in the house. When you're pressed on one side and pressed on the other and all of a sudden the sea parts open and you can go to your promised land. Now you know him as your deliverer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It gives you the opportunity to, to use, to use what God has already. See, a lot of times we're, 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 like, we're thinking that God's going to give something. Lord, I'm waiting for something from the outside to come to the inside. I'm waiting for something to penetrate my sphere. I'm waiting on something. And God said, I already, I already gave you. What you need? I'm going to really mess with your theology. Did you know you don't have any needs? Ain't nobody got any needs in here. Well, you're a liar, Pastor. I know you're lying now. You don't even know. I'll roll you out a list if you want me to. He says, I've already supplied all your needs according to my riches and glory. But I don't believe that. Well, then you won't be bothered with it. Don't worry. It won't work for you. You use what God has already given us through his word. And when we use what we've already been given, then we become stronger as a result. Go ahead and throw Galatians 5.22. It's a familiar piece of scripture. It says, but the fruit, in other words, the, the, the produce, what comes forth of the Spirit, of Holy Spirit, listen, is love. Right now, as we said earlier, there's a, you know, prayer going on, and much needed prayer. But as it says, the scripture says to love your enemies. You have an opportune time right now because of the adversity going on. To use what God has already given you and to love your enemies. Do you want them to see them fall on their knees because they got a bullet through their head? Or do you want to see them fall on their knees because they just had a Damascus road experience and they've seen the Lord? Joy. You have an opportunity right now to use the joy that he has given you. I'm telling you, listen, this is the kind of stuff the world don't understand. They don't, let, they don't understand it. They're like, what in the world are you, are you on, are you high? What, don't you know what's going on? It's like, no, you don't know this. Amen. Knowing this. Right. 
There's some things you don't know. You think there's some things. You think that, you know, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer and that I got, you know, a few screws loose. But I'm telling you, there's some things you don't know. And I'm going to exercise my joy because I've been given joy. You have the opportunity to use peace. I don't know. I don't know. Just crazier and crazier. It's getting crazier and crazier. Or you can just be like, you're my prince of peace. You know the end from the beginning. You got me and you got this. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to speak your words out of my mouth. I'm not going to speak from my feelings and my emotions. You, you, can, you can have a chance to use patience, which is long-suffering. You get to use it. And as we learned last week, if you don't have patience, you can't lack nothing. Everybody lacks, I want to lack nothing. And then family members and, 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 you know, friends, oh, child, you don't want to pray for patience. Oh, so what they're saying is that you're, you're not going to get the, you're not going to lack nothing. Throw that scripture on the screen real quick. Uh, James um, 1, 2 through 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations or adversity. Knowing this, here we go again, knowing, knowing that the trying or the trustworthiness of your faith works that patience. So you've got to have patience because that works patience. But let patience, you've got to have it, have her perfect work or mature, complete work that you may be mature, complete, listen, and entire, lacking nothing. Oh, I like the lacking nothing part where you've got to have the patience in there and work it, baby. So if you really believe that, then you've just stripped yourself of lacking nothing. Well, what about gentleness? You have a chance to use gentleness. That's what was given to you too. Hey, this is one I'm st still working on too. Glory be to God, okay? <laughs> Pastor Kimley's really good at this. I'll just bottom line it for you. She can do it and make it sound real sweet. So, but I'm, I'm, I'm using it, amen? I'm, I'm getting there. I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. I can use goodness. I have a chance to use goodness. I mean, everybody, you know, to each their own right now, isn't it dog eat dog world? I got mine, you get yours. What about goodness? You can use goodness. And what about faith? Let me tell you, you better be using that one right now. You better start working yourself up and get your faith built up. I don't want to, I'm not going to put fear into nobody, but you already seen some of the crazy stuff that's going on in this world. What happens the next time that you want, you're hungry and you want to feed your family and you want to walk into somewhere and they say, you got the mark? Well, you can't buy nothing here. Let's get real. Let's just go ahead and get real. You better be working on that faith. As, as I heard a man God say one time, the Lord will not let you know, his word fall. He'll make butter beans grow out of concrete. Amen. Well, y'all don't look like you're skinny. What's going on? We eating butter beans. I thought you lived downtown. There ain't no plans to plant butter beans. Look, we got butter beans growing, and that's all you need to know. Hallelujah. You have a chance to use meekness. Meekness is not weakness. Amen. You have a chance to use self-control. Temperance. It says against such there is no law. What does a law do? A law constricts. A law like we just went for. Law has boundaries. Has limits. Just like you go down the road and the sign says 35 miles an hour speed limit and you're zipping at 55, you could get a ticket. But this is what this saying is that there is no law, so there is no limit to these. 
How much times have I got to forgive my neighbor, Jesus? Seven times? How about 70 times seven? Limitless is what he's saying. Limitless. Throw up Hebrews 5, 14. Because not only can you have the opportunity to use what God has given you, that's the fruit of the Spirit, you have a chance to use it. But you become stronger as a result. Hebrews 5, 14. But strong meat. I'll say it again. I get tickled on Wednesday nights when we go really deep into something. And there's somebody there that they're just getting into the faith or that they've never really been taught the word that much. They've heard a few points and poems and stuff like that, but they've never really been taught line upon line. And all of a sudden, they'll be asking the craziest theological questions. In other words, they're like a one-year-old trying to eat a 16-ounce ribeye. All they can do is gum it. They ain't ready for that yet. Can I say this too? We've got some 30-year-old 30 30 year old Christians. I'm not talking about age of when you were out of your mom's womb. I'm talking about your rebirth, been born again for 30 years, that's still gum and steak. Why? Because strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age or mature. And it has nothing to do with chronological years. It has to do with maturing up. Those by who, here, here, here's those that are mature. Those who by reason of use, there we go, using it again. You can sit here and be a, be a church mouse, man. Every time the doors open, you are here. You can read your Bible every day. And there are some stuff going to get in you, but you don't grow and mature until you start using it. As it was said in even the offering today, test God in this. Oh, you can quote them all you want to, but you ain't going to get no results. I mean, look, once again, you can talk about having a harvest all you want to, but you ain't even planted seeds. Right. You're really still believing you're going to go to a barn somewhere, somehow, and there be all kinds of stuff in that barn, and you ain't even planted seeds yet. But you're praying earnestly about it. Well, you know, you can be sincere and be sincerely wrong. You are not going to have a barn of harvest nowhere because you've not planted any seeds. You haven't used anything. And it's these at times of adversity that gives the opportunity for you to use what he has already given you that will make you stronger. Because strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses, listen, exercised. Ask any kind of professional athlete if exercise is a part of their daily, listen, daily routine. And it depends on what level you want to go to. If you just want to be a hometown favorite or a local celebrity in something, you'll do it, you know, every other day or something like that. But listen, if you want to go big time, you got an exercise regiment in the morning, and then you probably got an ex exercise regiment in the afternoon. Yeah. One's going to work cardio, the other one's probably resistance training. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing it twice a day. Exercise to discern both good and evil. Was that God? Was that me? Was that the devil? Those that are of full age and mature that have used what God has given them have the ability to discern. Discern means you can separate. That's what it means. You can distinguish. That's God and that's not. We're going to go with God. Hallelujah. So when we give availability to the opportunity that was caused by adversity, then we, listen, we cultivate our character. Or we collapse our character. When you're meeting somebody for the first time, whether it's 
a romantic relationship, whether it's a business relationship, whatever it is, when you meet somebody for the first time, you have not met them. You've met their representative. But wait around until adversity hits. Because you're going to see who they really are and who they really pretend to be. Because they're like a sponge. They've been soaking up everything around them in life. But when the squeeze is on, what's on the inside is coming right out. And so that adversity is either going to cultivate that character. You'll be able to say, wow, that's a man or woman of integrity right there. Or you're going to be like, well, man, I heard him quoting Philippians and Colossians the other day, but they're in the fetal position crying on the floor saying, why, God, why? Why does it build one and it collapses another? Because one use the other not. One will use the word of God. Not just be, listen, you can be, you can, not saying you're not born again, you can, be, you, you can be born again. Stay in church all your life and still not use the Word of God. I know because I hear people all the time. What do you think about what's going on in this world? Blah, 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 blah. You mean, just gripe, complain, gripe, complain, fear, doubt, doubt, fear, fear, doubt, doubt, fear, confusion, anger. I haven't heard you quote anything from Jesus yet. Right. Okay. Let, me, let me get this straight. You, 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 you his, right? You his. How come you ain't saying nothing he said? That's right. Amen. I'm not hearing the word of God. Yes. I heard what Uncle Fred said. I heard what Auntie said. I heard what Professor so and so said from you. You told me told me what MSNBC said. You you, you quoted CNN. You you quoted Newsmax and Fox News, but you haven't quoted Jesus yet. Because those that have have <laughs> that are mature that have used. They know where to go to. They know the source. Why? Because they've used it. And they see the goodness of God and how they're growing up. And they not, listen, they're not going to let their environment infect them. They are going to affect the environment. That when they walk into a room, the atmosphere will change. Yeah, I'll just hang them and just kill them and just... And then somebody pops up for the Holy Ghost. And Jesus died for them too. That's right. The atmosphere will shift. You better believe it will. Because now he's finally got a, a real representative on the case. Hallelujah. Getting real quiet again. Make it or break it. Is it going to make you or break you? Because if you're not full of God's word and you're not using it, it is going to break you. Because to you, it is not reality. It is just some kind of Christian philosophy that the preacher preaches about. Or Big Mama has been talking to us about since we've been young. But come on, y'all. This is reality. For who? Well, you're out of your mind. No, I'm out of yours. It's not my reality. I know whose I am. Hallelujah. Well, who do you think you are? I'm a blood-bought, spirit-filled, Tongue-talking, devil-stomping, child of the Most High God, and I am who I am because of the great I am is who I am. Come 
Yeah, but what about da 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 da? What about the blood? Yeah. I don't even know what you're talking about. Well, I do. I'm I'm gonna be just fine. Amen. Yeah, but the death angel passing by. Have you applied the blood over your doorposts? There was some people scared about the death angel passing all over the land. But there was a group. There was a remnant redemption mobile. There was a remnant that didn't fear the death angel coming over because they had something. They had something the rest didn't, didn't have. They had the blood. Glory be to God. Oh, it's dark, brother. Hey, there's light in Goshen. That's my reality. I'll stand on it. I'll jump up and down on it. It's a sure, sure foundation. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. If problems were what perfected or matured us in of themselves, then most of God's children would have been matured and perfected long ago. And those who experience the greatest problems would be the strongest. But that's not the way it is. It's what you do in adversity that will either make you or break you. You heard a testimony of Brother Harris earlier. How do you get from scrounging around some boxes of food to feed your family to people you don't even know calling you up wanting to do business with you? Listen, not, not a five or ten. People throwing hundred dollar bills at you. But, but this is what we agreed on. Yeah, but I want to give you this. Amen. See, we like the end story, don't we? We don't want to back it up, though. Yeah, people look at my pastor and they're like, well, now, that's a church right there. That's a real nice church. Look at you. You got a, got a multi-million dollar facility on the one coast and you got a multi-million dollar facility on the other coast. That's how to do it. Coast to coast, continental. No, oh, could preach the paint off the of walls. But they don't want to back up to a young man who just got out of Bible school, that's wet behind the ears, don't have a clue about nothing, and his first church was started in the summer in a cement building with no air conditioning in the south in the summer with three people present. His stage was milk crates with plywood on top of it and his backdrop was shower curtains and he got to speak with a Radio Shack mic. <laughs> Man, I'd like to be like Bishop Jakes writing books everywhere, known around the world, Potter's House, come on now. But nobody wants to go back to West Virginia when he had his car repoed. Yes, right. When the ch first church van was actually his car before it got repossessed and it had a hole in, in, in the bottom of it so he just threw, a, threw a, like a home rug there so the kids' feet won't get, go down into the, the pavement. Oh, the potter's house, nice, my Lord, you've been to the potter's house. Yeah, and the first time he took his leadership to their first place, it was a storefront, it was rat infested, it had holes in the floor everywhere. Listen, everybody else looked at it and was like, you all right, Bishop? But he seed something they couldn't see. Could it be 
see, once again, knowing this, you got broke because you didn't know because you couldn't see it. Amen. But the other one saw it. And they thought you're crazy. They saw rats running around in holes everywhere and, and spider webs and the, the must of old, you know, old. You ever been to an old bookstore? It's just got that funk smell to it. But see, he could see the potter's house from there. And he worked what God gave him. What has God given you? If you're born again, I can tell you exactly uh, what he has given you again. He has given you love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. What are you doing with it? How are you using it? How are you growing thereby? Getting strengthened up. Or are you just going to fall apart like a wet paper bag when something heavy gets put in you? You ever seen those commercials, those paper towels? One, they holding it, and it's wet, and they drop something in there, and it just falls through. The other one, they got it stretched out, and it's wet, and they put something on, and it holds it. Who's your manufacturer? Do you even know how you were designed? Are you even living up to what capabilities you have? Amen, Amen owe me something. It's what you do in adversity that will either make you or break you. Are you using God's word? Not did you have your devotional. Did you sit through service and not fall asleep? Are you using God's word? That's a foreign concept to an individual who's never been taught their identity, their authority, or the rights and privileges that we have in Christ and his kingdom. I mean, you talking like Goofy from Disney World or something like that if they, it, it, to somebody else if they've never been taught that. They, I mean, really, they think you've lost your mind. You don't live in reality. If the only thing you've ever been taught, listen, is to cry out to God and wait to see if, it's, if it be thy will or not, Or whether he just doesn't want to do anything about it. We don't know. We're going to wait and see and cry out to God. Maybe, just maybe. If that's all you know, then your life's journey is, listen, is going to be full of a lot of potholes. I know. I've had many, um, let's see, what do they call that? Uh, alignments. I've had many front and rear alignments in my life from all the potholes that I've had until I, listen, until I, until I learned knowing this. Right. I don't have to go in and get in alignment all the time for all the potholes. Wait a minute. You mean that I could have spoke to that? Well, you sure could have. This verse over here says, da 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 I'll be daggone. You mean it was God's will that we're overcomers? Well, yeah, this verse over here. You mean this is the victory that overcomes the world? Our, our faith? Yeah. You, you mean I, it's just not if it be thy will that... that yeah. You mean he's, he's really said? Right. It amazes me sometimes. We're getting, in, we're getting into one just here just in a second. That you can, you can quote Jesus here and it's like, amen, brother, hallelujah. That's right. God did so love the world. Oh, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I believe it to the max. We'll go knock on every door. Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Listen, they're sold out. They're firm believers in what he said. It don't matter if they're living in the, under the bridge or they're living in the penthouse. They know everybody needs Jesus. You can't shake that. You, you can't shake that off of them. 
But, they don't know what to do with Mark 11, 22, and 24. Even though this is still red letters. Let me just say this. Don't ask God to do what he told you to do. Well, I, I, well uh, huh? What? Just keep hanging around. I challenge you to come on Wednesday nights. You ain't, listen, just like any college course, you ain't going to get your PhD by showing up once every six months. <laughs> it's, it's an ongoing thing. Eventually, it'll click. Why do you think he, listen, why do you think he calls his word a sword? You don't have to be a theologian. Let's just put our thinking caps on. A lot of times they don't want you to think in church, right? They just want you to eat whatever they feed you. Just eat it. Don't worry about it. Don't ask questions. Just eat it and go on. Let's think about that. He calls his word a sword. Let me say that again. He calls his word a sword. Here's something we know without having to dive into it and do a five-year study. How about this? Can we all agree that a sword is an offensive weapon? And that, in, listen, and indeed, it is a weapon. Wait a minute, Pastor. You telling me that God's word is a weapon? No, he told you that his word is a weapon. But if you've never been taught before, you got this weapon over here and you keep getting the snot pummeled out of you and you never pick it up to use it. Pow, 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 pow from the enemy. Lord, if it be thy will. Pow, pow, pow. And you get it, one of them crazy Jesus loving people who's been taught the word and said, pick up your sword, brother. Pow, pow. What? Pow, pow, pow. What sword? Pow, pow. Oh, God, if it be thy will, please, Lord. Pow, pow. Do something, Lord. Pow, pow, pow. So what's that thing over there for? That's your sword. It's a weapon. You're to use your sword. Not just hang it up in your house as a decoration. Or just keep it around for a conversation piece. Yes, we've had this Bible in our family for 40 years. It is very sentimental to us. Well, where's the one you read every day? Well, brother, this has been our family for 40 years. This is our Bible. This is the one we have in the house. Okay, I just saw you blow dust off. I mean, where's the one you read, though? Well, this is our Bible. Okay. No wonder I saw you doing this the other week. Pow! Listen, God has mercy. Your enemy does not. Amen. You're to speak to your mouth. We all believe you, Jesus. John 3, 16. Hallelujah. But there's many people in the body of Christ that's never been taught this. Throw Mark 11, 22 and 24. This is just as much Jesus as John 3, 16. And Jesus answered, saith unto them, Have faith in God. Some translations in the Greek, a more accurate would, reading would be, have the God kind of faith. What do I mean, have the God kind of faith? Amen. For God calls those things that be not as though they were. Huh? What have you been taught? That's what I'm saying. 
What have we been taught? God help me to break open the word of God. Y'all pray for me that I get revelations through the week so, 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 so I, can, I can bring it out. This is what the Holy Spirit is saying. Because it reads, have faith in God for verily or truly. In other words, he's putting emphasis here. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall, whosoever. So the understood subject is you. Let's understand this right now. The understood subject that you are, the, you are the noun here. It's you. You. Not God. Not pastor. Not apostle. Not bishop. Not prophetess. You. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain. He's telling you to speak to a mountain. You to, you to speak. Pray for me, Pastor, pray for me. Well, I can pray for you, but your mountain will only respond to your voice. Oh, you're speaking to it. Listen, you can just go through the motions and, well, I don't know, Pastor said, I'll just, okay, let me try something here. That ain't going to work. That's not going to work. It's going to be like them old vampire movies. When you got the rattling, shaky priest that finally holds up the cross, there's probably yellow liquid flowing from his leg at this time. I'm trying to keep it PG. Shaking, and the vampire struts up there. He grabs a hold of the cross and just takes it and bends it and crinkles it. And it only works if you believe. <laughs> and you got a bunch of Christians that have a loaded nine in their hand, but when the enemy comes, they're just going to throw it at him and run. <laughs> you speak to your mountain. Now, you just can't speak what's off the top of your head. That's why we come to church. We rightly divide the word. What do you speak to it? You speak the promise that God told you. You go to his word and find a promise, and that's what you speak to it. Just like right now, we got stuff going on just like anybody else. One of our cars is in the shop. Just as soon as it happens, you know what we start speaking to that situation? We're tithers. That devourer is rebuked. We appeal to the high court of heaven. We will get a verdict because that's what the promise of God says. And we're coming out of this and we're going to be just fine. Enemy, you have to give back sevenfold. I'm expecting $3,500 to be coming back to us. Amen. And I don't have to know when, where, who, or whatever. It's going to happen. Because you're going against God's word. Listen, and you got called out on it because you, amen, because you were speaking to your mountain. You can't even speak to a mountain if you don't know that that's what's wrong or right. So many people, they don't even know that. Not only do they know you, you, you have the authority to speak to things and use his promises and his name to speak to something. Sometimes people don't even know that it's even something wrong that the enemy's doing. Sometimes they think that the enemy is really God. You know, God sent this on me to teach me. Well, brother, just learn all you can then. Don't pray. Don't do anything. Just learn your lesson. See how, that'll, see how that goes for you. And if you're still alive, we'll talk about it later. You can see how foolish that was. I mean, like, you know, well, God put this sickness on me. Well, how, well whatever you do. Cancel that doctor's appointment because you're going to go against the will of God. See how stupid it is? And I mean, only religion can, can make somebody so stupid. Well, God's trying to teach me something through this sickness. Well, don't go to the doctor and try to get better. Learn everything you're supposed to from it. Everything. Why are you trying to violate the will of God? It's foolishness. God wants you well. 
Go on to the doctor. Speak over your situation. Talk to it. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. Maturity, use, exercised. Maturity, use, exercise. You ain't trying it. You know it. Going back to the, uh, what, what we had earlier, somebody, they, they, they had got a gun here, and here comes your adversary. They're going to take you down, and you're like, I, I, okay, I know from a kid you put your finger in here. It's, uh, is it a safety? Is it not a safety? That's, but then you got others it's like because they've been to the range a few times and they know how to use their weapon by use they have the experience and have gotten strong in it Shall not, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which, listen, which he says. This is what I'm saying. This is, this is Jesus teaching us this. You speak to your mountain. Don't doubt, don't doubt but believe. And, and whatever that you Oh, that can't be me. I mean, if you saw what I did last weekend, I mean. If you're his, listen, that has changed your condition, but it has not changed your position. You still have the authority. The devil just duped you into something, and your conscience is, your conscience is eating you up, and you're lacking confidence. That's why God says, says stay away from that foolish nonsense. Your confidence is, your authority is still there, but you don't have any confidence. Okay, man. But shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Well, you're just a, one of those Confess it, possess it, people. Blab it, grab it. Name it, claim it. Uh, no, I am reading from Mark 1, 11, 23, and Jesus said that. Yeah. Yes, there's a balancing out of it. We're not going to go into that. It's his word you speak. That's why you can have authority with it because you're not the one that initiated it. <laughs> it is written. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things ye desire when you play, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Stand to your feet. You are to speak God's word to your situation. I'm hoping that some dots are getting clicked while, while your pastor will tell you to read your Bible at all times. Because there's all kinds of things that are going to be thrown your way. And when they come your way, the Holy Spirit will bring stuff to remember. Listen, he can't bring into remembrance what you never read. But all of a sudden, this happened. And he will bring a promise to your remembrance. And that's what you can stand on, and that's what you speak. Speaking God's word to it in the name of Jesus. You better do it in his name. That's the only way that it has the authority. It's been a, listen, it's been God the Father approved if it's got his name attached to it. Knowing this, whew, help me, Holy Spirit. Some don't know. 
so some can't grow. You better know some. He's trying to get you to know some. Aren't you glad you didn't have to pay $500 just to drive to church this morning and an extra $100 fee just to get through the door? And I'm not standing up here and I've got like a little quarter machine or something. It's like there's a window and there's everything else. And, and if you want to hear me keep preaching... Just like a car meter. When that runs out every 15 minutes, you better be putting that money. If not, the door will come down on you and then the speaker will go blank in your little cubicle and you ain't going to... What am I trying to say with all that? Because I got you standing. I got to get you unstanding. What am I trying to say? God has freely given us these things. Freely. His word, you, with this church, other, other churches will give you a Bible if you don't have one. If you've, got, if, if you've got a phone, you have many translations right at your finger. If you've got Wi-Fi, you've got Bible. And he sent Holy Spirit on Pentecost, so you got him too. Knowing this, because if you don't know, you can't grow.